I shall outline my plan to destroy Britannia. The computer game business isn't just for kids anymore. It generates hundreds of millions of dollars a year, and it's just getting started. One of its entrepreneurs is Richard Garriott, a young man who grew up the son of an astronaut and whose dreams have become whole new worlds in the Ultima computer games that he invents and markets. And like the business, he too is just getting started. My father was an astronaut and went up on Skylab and on the shuttle. I would love to go up in outer space. In fact, if there's one thing uh, that I would rather do than this, it would be to leave this planet. Richard Garriott has managed to escape the Earth in a way by creating another world inside of a computer. Travelers here can find a map in their pack showing the world of Britannia, the setting for Garriott's long series of computer games. One of the hallmarks of the Ultima series is that it is a complete living, breathing world for you to go live out another lifetime in. And that world is simulated to as great a level of detail as we possibly can do. This is a pub. Your character can walk inside. You could drink. You could cook. You could play darts. As a teenager, Garriott loved games like Dungeons and Dragons, in which he played medieval characters. He began using computers to recreate the games. The first Ultima sold 50,000 copies. That first game, you know, put me into six-digit income immediately from zero as a high school student. And so, of course, it was the obvious thing to do was to do a, a second game. And each new game attracted more players. Even back in this most primitive day, it was something that actually would be interactive, something that actually would react to your activity. And so even from day one, it was very compelling to, to play computer games. Today, 12 years after the first Ultima, Britannia is almost unrecognizable. But Lord British is still the king, and you are still his intrepid knight, called the Avatar, as ready as Indiana Jones for the adventures that lie ahead in the new game. It begins with an animated sequence that launches you to the Serpent Isle to defeat this evil demon. There I shall outline my plan to destroy Britannia. And then we start the game proper and we drop the player in the middle of, uh, of the game world. And then he can all of a sudden walk around and do whatever he wants. As soon as you move your character, the computer reacts. Then you're walking along these magical storms start wreaking havoc on the place. The computer takes away your friends. Then it conjures up two monks. One tells you you should abandon your friends, and the other tells you you should get together with your friends. If you choose yes, for instance, then that character may give you one whole set of clues. If you choose no, the character may terminate the conversation. It's a non-linear game in the sense of you don't have to just follow A, B, C, D, exactly what the author tells you to do. But the more options you give the player, the more eventualities we have to be prepared for when we create the game. You're supposed to concentrate on killing monsters, but you could attack the king instead. Players try to kill him as a means of, of demonstrating how, how far along they've gotten in their games. The computer is programmed to protect the king. In fact, I've told my programmers, if you can kill Lord British, you're fired. But sometimes there are loopholes. The computer really has the upper hand because it controls the world. And if you succeeded, you've beaten the computer. Even for a computer, it's hard to keep track of a world this big. All this code, pages and pages of code, handles nothing but just opening and closing, locking and unlocking doors. That's hundreds of doors in over a dozen cities. It would take you over a week just to walk around the world as a spectator if you didn't interact with anything. And every little piece is built by hand by someone. It's, uh, if, if I stop to think about this, I, I, I couldn't do it. I mean, it's just an overwhelming task. But Britannia is already being rebuilt for the next game. And with technology changing so rapidly, there's no telling how real Garriott's world will get. I want to build a place which is real enough for you to believe that it's real. Not just the sensory aspects, but the things you can see and do. And once the hardware becomes available for us to fool your senses, Ultima will be the very first ever completely virtual worlds. And that's my goal. At the end of his new game, Garriott takes you into space. Thanks to him, you don't have to be an astronaut to get here, just an avatar with a computer. 
perhaps he would join me in another world altogether. We do have a score to settle. Wow. Oh, look, isn't that cute? And may the force be with you. And we're back in a moment with Warren today, right after these messages.